93 boxing i'm back with another video a bit late to the party but i'm hearing that lamar peterson and errol spence fight is official and it's going to happen i i don't know when you can google this easily but when it's going to happen is not as important as talking about the fight and analyzing the fight so let's go into it people are thinking it's easy work for errol spence and it could end up being easy work but you know fighters like Lamont Peterson, Chris Algieri, Diego Chavez, um, Luis Colazo. These are fighters that are not elite. Well, like, Lamont Peterson might be on the edge of elite in my opinion. But these fighters are not necessarily elite. But they're good. And on any given night, they can really turn it up. And they can... It's, they're not to be underestimated like it's easy to underestimate these fighters but they can really like they can really put on the show on any given night and especially with Lamont Peterson where he apart from the Matisse fight every fight that he had that he you know that people that he lost or he should have lost was controversial it was competitive fight Lamont Peterson and just like all of these guys is a high higher risk for the amount of reward that they give. And for that I rate Errol Spence. You see. I did not rate Kell Brook. Because he avoided fighters like Jesse Vargas. Diego Chavez. Brandon Rios. Um, when Keith Thurman fought Diego Chavez. Diego Chavez was actually giving him some work. Luis Colazo gave him some work as well. When the main comp for Julio Diaz. Diaz gave him some work as well. Um, there's plenty of fighters that are. You know, on that level, you know, again, when the mayor come for Chris Algieri, he gave him some work. You know, just imagine going into like, and I want to make, like, I'm going to explain this fully, just bear with me, right? Just imagine when the mayor is going into the Chris Algieri fight, right? Chris Algieri is going, uh, he's coming off a Manny Pacquiao um, fight where he got dropped six times. Um, a mayor coming off a Devin Alexander win and a Luis Calazo win, and he looked spectacular doing it. He's one of the fastest fighters out there, highly skilled. Confidence through the roof, but someone maybe a bit overconfident and underestimating his opponent because what it seems like he probably went in the fight thinking, you know what, Chris Algeri, he ain't a big puncher, he is not a aggressive pressure fighter. He's a mover. He doesn't move as well as me. He's a fast fight. He can be fast, but he's not as fast as me. Um, he's not as experienced as me. Um, so yeah, he probably went in there thinking easy work, but it wasn't easy work. Because Chris Algieri, they just turned it up. He just turned it up, right? Again, same thing with Keith Thurman and Luis Colazo. Colazo was losing first, second, third round. But it was still like, even though he was losing convincingly in the, in the first part of the fight, he was still in the fight. You know, it wasn't like a shot out performance in the first three rounds. These guys can turn it up any any time. Lamont Peterson is actually... One of the most dangerous fighters of, out of all these level like names that I mentioned. When it comes to like, you know, Diego Chavez, Chris Algieri's, the uh, Lamont Petersons, the Jesse Vargas, he's one of the most versatile fighters out there in boxing. He's he can be fast. He he's good in the long range. Good in the inside fighting. Mid range is pretty good. Um, quick twitch, good reflexes, confident. Lamont Peterson is a really good fighter. Really good fighter. Errol Spence is a guy that I'm picking Lamont Peters like picking to beat Lamont Peterson. But you just never know. You just never know, right? Considering that every fight, every top fight that Lamont Peterson had were competitive, apart from Matisse, Danny Garcia, Amir Khan, Victor Ortiz. Um There's a few out there, I just can't remember on top of my head, but they're out there. Lamont Peterson is more, I would say, versatile than Errol Spence in the sense that he has more overall skills than Spence. Spence might be a little bit too big for him, and the, you know, his, you know, Spence is like more accurate than what people think, and also he's just fundamentally sound, fundamentally sound boxer, a lot of body shots, very strong, rugged, tough. So. I think Errol Spence would win. But again, as I said, these guys are high risk, low reward guys. Okay. A lot of times guys get exposed. Not when they're fighting top fighters, but when they're fighting guys like 
this when they're fighting guys like a Mauricio Herrera, Lamont Peterson, Diego Chavez. Because we remember Danny Garcia when he fought Mauricio Herrera. And he, that was a controversial performance, okay? Was very competitive. And he was coming off the Matisse win. Before that, he fought Zab Judah. And before that, he fought Eric Morales, Amir Khan, and so on. And, you know, all those fights that he had... Like, look at the first, from the first Eric Morales fight, right? He fought Morales in the first fight, dropped him. Amir Khan dropped him, stopped him. Morales in the second fight, dropped him and stopped him. Um, Zab Judah dropped him. Um, Lucas Matisse, a guy that we never thought, at least most people never thought that he can be dropped by Danny Garcia, and Garcia dropped him. So he is coming off some great performances. And then he goes on to fight in Herrera. And I'm telling you, Herrera is also one of those guys. He can really turn it up at any given night and it can cause a controversial performance. It'd be like, these sort of guys can expose you. Again, American for Julio Diaz, people are saying he got exposed. With Algeria as well, people are saying he got exposed. He them for Luis Calazo, as I said. People were saying he got exposed to the body. People said that, didn't he? And again, also, Leonard Bundu, although I thought that was a good performance, like, as in, I know he didn't score a knockout, but... He dropped him and he shut him out completely. But yeah, this is a risky fight for the amount of reward that there is. You beat Lamont Peterson, it's like, oh, people expected him to beat Lamont Peterson. But the fight can be competitive, man. I think it'd be competitive as long as it lasts. And I rate Errol Spence for this. Because, as I said, these are not like push up. These are not bums. You know, Kel Brook be fighting Joe Jordan, kept Frankie Gavin, all this. Frankie Gavin's not a fighter like that. That, you know, it's a fighter that... Fighter of Lamont Peterson's level, on uh, all these um, Diego Chavez's level. And Kel Brook be fighting bums, he'd he be avoiding fighters like this. He'd be avoiding fighters like uh, Jesse Vargas, Brandon Rios, Diego Chavez. And when Errol Spence is fighting fighters on that level, because as I said, high risk... For the amount of reward, I have to rate that. I have to rate that because that shows that Errol Spence is about getting the titles and unifying the division and being the best in that division, looking to not duck anyone and looking to fight everyone, just hunt everyone down and fight everyone. That's what I rate. Errol Spence is a true champion, and I really hope Errol Spence does well in his career because Errol Spence. Is a guy that he's a likable character as well. He comes across as very humble, but at the same time, he manages this really well. He is humble, but there's that supreme confidence in him. Supreme confidence. Um, he's about business. He's he's actively fighting compared to a lot of these guys. Like American hasn't been fighting in years. Danny Garcia hasn't been fighting since March. Um, who else? I mean, I know Sean Porter's a bit active. You know, Keith Thurman, and again, this guy's somewhere in Nepal. Um, I'm a fake injury people are talking about. I don't know, man. He's, Errol Spence is active. He just came off the Kell Brook. He could take a break. He could fight a bum. I mean, he could already claim, look, no one wants to fight me. Let me fight a Jojo Dan. Let me fight a Kevin Bizier. But no, Errol Spence is going straight to Lamont Peterson. Because, you know, he can really claim that. Keith Thurman don't want to fight him. It's obvious. Danny Gossett clearly don't want to fight in a hard fight for this one. It's obvious. Unless, I mean, actually, it's not obvious, but like, Danny Gossett, we don't even know when he's going to be back. It's a big layoff. I don't think he'll be wanting to fight Errol Spence. Sean Porter is getting a pass for ducking Errol Spence. He's going to fight Adrian Ganados. Well, and, you know, with that said, Errol Spence can be saying that, hey, look, I just fought Kel Brook. But still no one wants to fight me. No one wants to fight me. So I'm going to, you know what? This is a bum. That's all I got. That's all that can fight me. That's all that's agreeing to fight me. So I'll just fight him. And he could get away with doing that. But no, he's going to fight Lamont Peterson. He's trying to hunt, hunt Keith Thurman down. Because Thurman's, uh, like Peterson is one of Thurman's mandatories for one of the super titles. Th uh, as in like Peterson's got a silver title. So... Yeah, man, I'm actually liking what Errol Spence is doing. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's doing what fighters are supposed to do. So, you know, for all the fans, make sure you support Errol Spence. If he looks bad in the performance, don't just be saying, oh, he got exposed, this and that. Because Keith Thurman was like that as well. He was looking to fight everyone. 
Danny uh, Garcia, uh, Amir Khan. Amir Khan was willing to fight everyone at the time. I remember he went to Peterson in his own hometown. Like, who does that if you're the A side? And also, like, he was looking to fight Timothy Bradley. And I remember him saying that he gave a 50 50 split to Tim Bradley. And back in the day, Bradley wasn't selling shit. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment down below. Subscribe to my channel, 93 Boxing. I'm out.